There are about one billion bikes built for land on a planet that's two-thirds water. So for me, it seems like high time to have an aquatic frontier in cycling. This is such a rich bike culture in the San Francisco Bay Area. 130,000 commutes every day in and out of San Francisco. Mountain biking was literally born right here on Mount Tam in Mill Valley. So I just sort of scratched my head. I said, surely somebody in the world has invented a way to ride down to the water's edge, get onto the water, bike across, and get to the other side. And so I became obsessed with it. So last September, I made the first ever bike ride across the San Francisco Bay. Back then, I was using an old Italian Da Vinci-esque kind of flotation system that I attached a road bike to, which actually worked, but it was not a very good user experience and had all sorts of inefficiencies in that it was not a good propulsion system. And I said, you know what? I'm going to make the best water bike in the world. And that's really where this all started. OK. Easy, step on the pontoon, really easy. People, oddly enough, have been trying to develop a water bike for about 100 years. They're pretty, some pretty amazing ideas. I think the challenge that everybody has had, and the reason why, by and large, most of the world doesn't know what water biking is, is because no one's ever combined the experience of being on a bike, on the water, I mean, a real bike, you know, not a pedal boat, not some, you know, cheap made thing, but to actually have something that feels like a precision engineered bike. You know, the process of actually building the bike really required a multidisciplinary approach of bicycle technology, hydrodynamics, merging things together. There's so many different issues with torque and propeller design and looking across the landscape at every water bike that's ever been invented. And we looked at motorcycle designs. We looked at airplane designs. We also looked at a wide range of bicycles in general. What is a bicycle? What does a water bike mean? And that was the first question we asked ourselves is, you know, what should a water bike look like? How should it function? So you'll notice, you know, there's no wheel. I mean, why, why, you don't need a wheel on the water. There's no forks, right? So there's some aspects of this that very much retain the style of a bike, but at the same time, you know, it's almost inspired by a mast and boom, like on a sailboat. So the design that we've chosen, every bike mechanic on the planet ought to really appreciate because when they open this up, they'll be able to identify the cables and the housing and gates, carbon drive belts, the sprockets, the struts. There's nothing in here that the average bike mechanic couldn't identify and couldn't service no matter where you are in the world. So that was one of the biggest things is this needs to be very low maintenance, really easy to use. And for a human-powered vehicle, which is what this is, it's all about converting the maximum amount of human energy into propulsion. So basically, we have two propellers that are mounted on reaction arms. So we've borrowed a little bit of you know, sort of hot rod motorcycle uh, design. And these two propellers uh, actually turn in unison. They oscillate together. And for us, uh, that was a huge bit of innovation, is that we didn't need to have a rudder on the bike. And the reason why we didn't want to have a rudder is because for the most part, unless you're actually turning, a rudder just sits in the water and it creates drag. Um, so by using uh, two oscillating propellers that literally move in unison like this, whenever I turn these handlebars and this will evolve into just having the handlebars and you're basically just going to be steering with your handlebars uh, so you won't have this extra set here. But you're able to really just turn both propellers at the same time. You know, it's just like a precision engineered bike where you have this, you know, perspective. You're not sitting down in a kayak. You're not, you know, wobbling back and forth like on a stand-up paddleboard. You're on a bike and it's really stable and it's fast. Like any bike, it, you know, what you put in is what you get out. <laughs> Most people can do about six knots per hour, which is about equivalent to about eight miles per hour on land. 
And you know, people with athletic ability can do eight knots. And on the water, that's a very good clip. The reality is, your leg muscles are much stronger than your, your shoulder muscles. For most people, uh, with the exception of you know, professional kayakers or you know, real hardcore athletes who have big upper body strength, almost everybody has bigger legs. And so when you use your legs on the water, you know, you're really able to generate a much faster, you know, higher degree of torque. You know, the torque is much different on the bike than it is on a paddleboard, right? And what's really nice about being on the water is that the water is always moving. It's always changing. The, the difference in experience when it's flat and glassy is just like road biking. And when you start to get into choppier water, it becomes more like mountain biking. And the bigger the swell, at some point you'll be up out of the saddle and going up and over waves. And it's a blast. I and mean, it's the most dynamic cycling experience you could imagine. See, like here, this is when it's fine. You get good waves. like a soft hit, a soft bump. What's really nice about water biking is it's low impact. There's nothing that's hard on your knees, there's nothing that's hard on your back, you're not gonna hit a pothole. And we're really designed this to be, you know, seaworthy, to be able to ride it out on San Francisco Bay, which is arguably one of the hardest bodies of water to do anything nautical on. You know, and some people are going to want to have the fast cycling experience. I think lots of people are gonna to wanna to go adventure with this and go explore and you know, go fishing and you know, find you know, hidden beaches. And that's the beauty of this is you're able to carry a lot of gear. This actually supports saddlebags and you know, certainly a cooler and tent and sleeping bag and mounts for fishing poles. Well, this is actually you know, doing reverse donuts. It's always fun. Part of the reason why we really wanted to have, you know, a reverse feature is that when you're around sensitive habitat, you know, coral reef, you could keep your distance and back up. What made me think I could do this? I must be a little bit crazy. You know, this is you know, really an entirely new sport, a new category. If you look back 40 years ago, road cyclists laughed at the early mountain bikers here on Mount Tam. Like, why would you ever ride a bike down a mountain? And literally, they took Schwinn's and wrapped them with denim around the handlebars and, you know, for padding. And now I think people are going to really appreciate, you know, why not use biking and bike technology to deliver a fantastic cycling experience on the water? But this isn't limited to the world of cyclists. This is a whole new water sport.